Hello and welcome to another edition of Shiny New Products. Well, it's less shiny today and more clothing and fabric. We've got some brand new ASOS S9 shorts to show you. They're all new Gore Shake Dry jacket and a nice matching Gore Shake Dry cap. But at the start, I think, with the new ASOS shorts. So ASOS is not a brand I need to tell you much about. A high-end, premium, expensive brand uh, known for its quality. For a long time, if you wanted the best bib shorts, you bought ASOS, as simple as that really. They basically invented the bib short back in the late 70s along with a skin suit. And really, they are still one of the best, although there's a lot more competition in the high-end sector these days. But these are their latest product. S9 short replaces the previous S7 with some new technologies. Um, quite a few changes really. They're not available until January 2019, so this is a, a bit of a first look, but I've got plenty of time to put them through the paces and find out what they're about. So that's the box. Have a good ride on the bottom, that's a nice little detail, but let's open up and have a look. So that's how they arrive, in a nice little plastic wrapper. Let's open it up. And there we go, first look at the brand new ASOS S9 shorts. This is actually the first time I've seen them. I've not unboxed them until now, so you'll see them for the first time just like I am. But let's start inside the short, because that's the most important part of any bib short. So this is what you buy an ASOS bib short for, is the padded insert. And right away we can see it's very different to the previous S7 uh, padded insert. The first thing to note is they've got rid of that purple pink color and they now replace it with a subdued gray. And one of the main changes is they've reduced the size of the padding in key places to reduce the volume and the weight. There's the same dimple surface as before and a 3D waffle three layer construction. They use a new micro shock foam which maximizes breathability and they've increased the ventilation around the front as well to make them run a bit cooler in high, high temperatures. And they've also added a central stitching to the short to stop it moving about because they still got a golden gate, which is basically I can demonstrate by putting my hands through the bib short there. The idea here is to allow the padded insert to move about and float about when you're moving in and out of the saddle, just to provide or to ensure that the pad stays on your body in the same place and doesn't uh, move about. And that central stitching should keep it in the right place a bit more. So an interesting looking pad. I've always been impressed with the previous S7 design, this golden gate, might sound a bit of a marketing BS thing, but it actually does work and provides really good comfort and make sure the pad stays on your body where it should be and doesn't move about. Nice to see a bit of extra ventilation. I like the sound of this um, revised padding and reduced volume. So I'd be interested to see how that performs. So that's the pad, all new. Let me show you the rest of the shorts because there's some interesting stuff going on. And the first thing to note is probably the easiest thing to spot really, different about these shorts. It's what they're calling A-lock engineering. And it's basically a new way, I'm getting a bit tangled up here, aren't I? But there we go, that's the back of the shorts and you can see the bib straps come together at the top of the back and a crossover as they go down towards the short. And they spread across with two anchor points at the bottom of the short. And the idea here is basically to stabilize the back of the padded insert to keep that padded insert in the right place and use the straps to keep it all in the right place and it's attached in two places at the bottom and just a bit further up there. They meet in the middle of the back at the top there and then they come over the front down to the sides, nice and widely placed at the side of the stomach there. It's a nice stretchy material, uh, nice and soft, no seams on the edges. Very nice to get a bit of perforation on the back by the looks of it there. Now, the rest of the shorts, they've minimized the amount of seams and they say there's 30% fewer seams in the construction of the shorts. And they're saying it's basically a two panel design. And you can really see there are very few stitches around the shorts. Panel at the front, got a nice wide panel at the back as well. It's all smooth edges, kind of laser cut edges with a bit of reinforcing material over the top to give a bit of stretch and improve that durability. Nice smooth stitching on the inside. And if we move down to the hems, the leg openings, these are a brand new, an all new fabric with a wide band. That's something we've seen on a lot of high end bib shorts these days, that wide band design. With a non sticky but a sticky gripper material on the inside to make sure the shorts don't move about on your legs. 
So that's a quick first look at brand new ASOS S9 shorts. As I mentioned, there's a new padded uh, liner. There's an all new outer short, uh, new bib straps as well. The result of all the changes according to ASOS is improved fit, improved comfort, better aerodynamics and better breathability. The usual sort of claims you expect and hopeful in a high end bib short. They certainly feel like they changed a lot. There's a lot of details here that I've not seen on the previous shorts and that's some nice attention to detail on it. I look forward to testing them. These are the Keep RS shorts, the affordable version. Um, they cost £175. There's another version that sits above them using a different fabric. But for most people, these are probably the shorts they're looking at because it's a high price, but it's not astronomical. You certainly pay it a lot more. But it'd be interesting to see what they're like. And I'll be putting them on and going for a ride fairly soon. So I'll let you know how I get on with those shorts. But let's move on from the shorts to something else. Put it to one side. And with autumn underway here in the UK and winter just around the corner, unfortunately, we're time for rain clothing and waterproof jackets. One of the best, single best products launched in the last few years, in my opinion, is the new Gore Shake Dry uh, fabric and jacket, which launched in 2016. A high price, definitely an expensive product, but in terms of the performance it offered, just incredible. Uh, super lightweight, really breathable, uh, really packable, and of course, 100% waterproof. Now, for 2019, or 2018, should I say, they launched a, the stretch version of the jacket. And as you can see, they've added stretchy panels in key places to just improve the fit. So some people found with the original jacket that the fit could be a bit restrictive in certain places around the cuffs and around the body, especially with loaded pockets. So they developed this waterproof stretchy material. The, it's only stretchy in one pane, so you can see it stretches that way, but it doesn't stretch that way. So you can control the amount of stretch in key places to give the sort of fit they need in different areas. And the idea is just to enhance the fit and reduce that restriction of movement. So you see it on the lower panels there, up underneath the armpits, on the cuffs there. We turn it over, you can see two big panels on the shoulders there, and those front ones extend around the back as well. So, the upshot of these stretchy panels is improved fit, as I mentioned, reduced restriction of movement. The downside is a bit more weight. They add about 40 or 50 grams to the overall jacket. So you're looking at about 160 grams for a jacket, depending on size, which is still lightweight. It's not quite as light as the original jacket with just over 100 grams, which is like phenomenal for a, a lightweight jacket. The other slight downside, because the material is quite thick, it does reduce the packability. The previous jacket would essentially disappear in the middle of the jersey pocket. This new material means it doesn't pack up quite a small, but it's still definitely one of the most packable jackets on the market. And it's probably a small compromise for the improved fit. And um, you spend more time wearing it than it spends its time in the pocket. It's probably not a bad thing at all. Uh, while I've got the jacket on its back here, you can see there's now a little um, a zipped pocket as well with a flap covering the zip. So that's a useful addition. So you put a few bits and bobs in there. You can see there's a nice drop tail. Uh, reflective logos. I'll turn it back over. Nice, nice high collar, double uh, material. The main zip goes into a little garage there. If I open it up, you can see inside there all the tape seams as you'd expect because this is a 100% waterproof jacket. Let me put it on and show you what it looks like. So, this is a size small. Um, there are different sizes available, of course, and different cuts as well. Uh, Gore has revised its range this year, and they've got different <laughs> cuts depending on what sort of fit you want. And this is the C7, so a bit of a, a racing fit. There is a pretty good fit. Yeah, it looks good. As you can also tell, it's still in this unique colour. And this colour is basically the colour that the fabric comes out of the machine, if it comes out of the machine. Okay, there's a new two layer fabric. Previous waterproof jackets were three layers with a um, durable water repellent treatment on the surface, but this is a new two layer fabric, which is why it's so breathable and so thin and packable, but it does mean they're limited with color. They have introduced some jackets with color panels, but they haven't managed to find a way to color 
this fabric yet. They are working on it and they are working at finding ways of offering a wide range of colors. When it comes to price, it's not cheap. It's costing 280 pounds. And yes, that's a lot of money. You can buy a lot of nice things for 280 pounds. But while it's expensive, it's not overpriced. And in my opinion, it easily justifies that price because the performance it offers is just out of this world. It's definitely the best in class. There's no half jacket that comes near it. If you are serious about going out in the winter and riding whatever the weather, this jacket will pay for itself very quickly. And one way to look at it, it's cheaper than a smart trainer and a swift subscription. So if you wanna go outside and ride in the rain, this jacket will yeah, definitely pay for itself. I've not tested any other jacket which is as breathable, as packable, and as waterproof as this Gore Shake Dry jacket yet. So yes, it's expensive, but it's a real investment in your riding if you are serious about getting out in the winter. And there's just no, nothing else that beats it really. And that's available now in shop, different sizes. Um, watch out for a full review on Race CC soon, and I'll give you an update on how I get on with it when I've got some suitable weather. At the moment, it's nice and sunny, but the forecast is set to change, so I'll keep you updated on that one. And lastly, building on the success of that shake dry jacket is a new shake dry cap. Now, Gore has produced a couple of waterproof caps in the past, but like old previous generation waterproof jackets, the breathability let them down and you could sweat quite a bit more than you would get rained on. But now they're using that shake dry jacket to make a cap and that's it there. So you get a nice little peak with reflective trim around the front edge there, reflective over the top if not wearing a helmet. I'm not gonna start the helmet debate. Elasticated section at the back to adjust the fit because it's a one size fits all. So if there's anything like a jacket, it should be amazing. Um, should sit underneath the helmet nicely and not overheat you when you're riding in um, mixed weather conditions. Let me try it on. There we go. What do we think? You like it? Yeah, it feels good. It feels pretty good. So, that's been the uh, new Atos S9 bib shorts, available 2019, £175, full review coming soon. New Gore Shake Dry jacket, available now, £280, and a new matching Gore Shake Dry jacket. I'm not sure how much of this, but I'll put a price in the description below. But that's all for now. That's been another edition of Shiny New Products with some lacy clothing here. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, hit that like button at the bottom. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel by hitting that red button at the bottom so you don't miss any future videos from myself and the rest of the RACC team here. But it's sunny outside, I'm gonna go for a ride and I'll see you again in the next video.